Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fans of LAFC from around, what is going on? I am Nick. This is the Voices of the Black and Gold. And of course, we have Celso and Eric with us. Hey, man, I am stoked for today. Not only do we have a jagnormous guest to come and visit us and let us get in his ear and get some information, but we won against Carson over the weekend. It was a amazing game it was an amazing game bell uh, uh gareth bell was there we got to see him walk over there get his shower all the women were happy with his wet t-shirt contest that he had going on it was pretty awesome right um and then on today wet we got thrasher. to see the yeah we got to see the presser with gareth there we don't know what number he's going to be but we got to see it so let's go on and get into this before we have this special guest celso you were there eric you were there let me hear it man how was it celso we'll start with you Yes, I was there, and it was very much well everything we could expect of El Tráfico. You know, a very, very good game, five goals. You know, what is probably the most amazing thing about this game to me is the number of goals that occur every single time you watch it. You can guarantee to go fast, and you know, thankfully this time things went our way. You know, at the end, uh, you know, the the thirty-two fifty-two was celebrating, and I think they deserved it. Uh, the common theme to me was how happy everybody was. Uh, for this ghost but for example to be exterminated this season but ultimately it was a step forward as a lot of the coaching staff said after the interviews because there's still a big journey ahead we have new players to incorporate and we also have essentially two two not one trophies to catch on so I think it almost became a responsibility of LAFC to come out of this year with at least one but, you know, the way this roster is being built, the way the expectations and the energy is running wild in the room, man, this is a team that is destined for more than one title. And I'm very excited to be a part of the very, journey. But Eric, very, listen, very excited. Eric was there way before me. I messed up LA traffic in the L traffic caught me. I said I was going to there be there around three. I got there at 530. So wow. Eric was there way before me. Tell me a little bit about what's going on before the game, bud. Well, oh, no, man. Eric was there, and he had an amazing tailgate. We have some videos. Eric, tell us about the tailgate, buddy. We held it down at the tailgate. We we pulled up. You know, I want to give a very special thank you to the Pride Republic and for the District 9 for being very gracious. It was the first tailgate. You know, I was kind of the new guy there. I've showed up and participated. The first time I actually set up a tent, which I borrowed <laughs> from work. And, <laughs> you know, so it was a little Mickey Mouse. But everybody was super cool, super helpful. And uh, once they kind of figured out we had good intentions, super accommodating. And it was one hell of a party that day. Super packed. Everybody everybody kind of pins and needles what's going to happen because anything can happen at El Trafico. We show up to party before the game, and we all want to party after the game. And luckily, the team decided to give us that opportunity to continue partying all night long, and we did. Yeah, no. it was an extremely close game. I was just going to say, ma mention the X goal battle was extremely close, like we haven't seen it before. LAFC typically wins the X goals, comes out not victorious in this game. It was not the case this time. 1.8 versus 1.6, according to FB Ref, which is always my reference for all things statistics. Shout out to them. I always like to give that because they do a really good job. But to me, there was a very balanced game that just went our ways. We just had more balls in, in the back of the net and ultimately made fewer mistakes that cap that we capped that we're able to not uh, have it capitalized on and allowed us to win this game. But again, very, very close. Could have gone the other way, and I saw some things that have still gave me pause, man. So ha happy that more help is on the way is what I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah, man, you know, it's crazy. Uh, we didn't get to see the number, but it is true. We've seen now that it has been linked that he's going to get number 11, which will mean that he's going to take Sifu's number. We're going to talk a little bit more about this after uh, we do this interview as we're waiting for John to show up. But, uh, you know, look, today was uh, – we'll talk about this until he comes, but today was the day for Bell to, uh, you know, get introduced. And it was a wild, man. It was a lot of people there. The energy felt high. Uh, Celso, you were there. How was it, man? Yeah, absolutely. It was a great, great, you know, I, I would say closure of everything that we've been sort of working towards. There was a lot of work behind the scenes from everyone involved to get this um, player to play for LAFC. And today was sort of that coronation, if you may. <clears throat> you could tell that Gareth Bale, more than anything, just wants to play ball. And this is good news for us. This guy is hungry. He has a lot of pride that he wants to carry into the world cup through wales and lafc is the channel man like i talked to larry burke before 
or during this event. And to me, one of the things that sticks out is we now have players of every single different nationality that is going to be represented in this upcoming World Cup in Qatar. So to me, I mean, the accomplishment has already been done. The fact that the United States will be represented with Kelly Acosta. Maxime Cripo is going to be going with Canada and maybe has a chance to, to show something and go. You know, the Uruguay may have one player from us. You know, we don't know, but Ecuador is going to hopefully rely on our players in order to make a run in this World Cup. I'm really excited to see which LAFC players go into Qatar, but also the ones that are going to play alongside Bale. Maybe have a match between them. I mean, how exciting it is for your own team. That's oh, the yeah. stuff that you hear about Real Madrid, not Los Angeles Football Club. And we're going to be able to see that. Yeah, no. you know, and, and, and looking at looking at this for the World Cup coming up, you know, I, I'm already starting to see a lot of a lot of chatter about Sifu and and people for for his side saying, you know, this guy needs to be in the starting lineup. You know, we should see a lot of hopefully see some Palacios in there. And not only are a lot of our players going to be on, on nations representing, a lot of them should be in the starting lineup as well. And in throwing Rossi as an X player, there's going to be so much to watch. Absolutely. And I, to me, to Sifu, and then he gave some interviews after the game, you know, he draws a lot of interest from the South American media. And what you hear from them is a common theme of a player that's still kind of starting to get acquainted with the international scene. I still feel that he's in growth mode and the coaching staff will give us that, that he's still sort of understanding his capability and his ceiling. But at the same time, you see his potential. And the question I did not get to ask him was, what do you prefer these days? Because you're doing everything for us. You're servicing your, play, um, you know, your your teammates, and and the stats are showing that you were the statistics. Excuse me, the assist leader for LAFC up until very recently. You know what I mean? And now you're scoring goals off set plays and other players. You know what I mean? And 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 other crosses and and, and in different ways. You know, to me that shows versatility and growth of a a, a, a true number ten, someone that we might be not in a position or you know not in need of it anymore if he continues to show this kind of growth you know pretty soon and i pose this question to some of the national media you know pretty soon we're going to be having a conversation of you know is sifu worth of a bigger contract of a bigger role in this team he's, you know what i mean he's or really is he ready he, to take the next step oh he's he's really developed i mean from when he first came to the team you know you, he, he had very high expectations, which, uh, you know, I think we're starting to see more often as we come down to earth more as LAFC fans and get more time in the league that a lot of players who come here take a little bit of time to adjust to the league, you know, and uh, they, they come in with lots of plaudits and, and nonetheless, you know, they're going to take a little bit to, to really get into it. And Sifu, I think, is one. We had very high expectations of him coming up and which led to some disappointment, but he is hitting his stride. I mean, he's had a two games where he is just almost best 11 in the league. His dribbling last game was so on point. And then the recent El Trafico, he he translated it into into shots on the goal, you know, and putting some goals in. And and it's uh, we, we couldn't ask for him to develop more. And if he keeps developing at the rate he has this year, he's going to be very scary come the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. sorry. that I was just got a hold of uh... – John's running a little bit late. He's going to be here around five thirty. So um, let's go on and get yeah, into the rest going. of the show, and then we'll, we'll yeah. when he gets here, we'll we'll do all that. Um, but you know, one thing cool about what uh, Eric did at the tailgate is that he got a bunch of fans' perspective of, of what's happening at the tailgate, also. So I, I, we made a cool video. I thought we would show that, and then um, we'll go off of. We also got some highlights for the reels, and we'll talk about everything that we've seen. So let's sort of just get a little bit of the fan interaction and see how. Uh, what we all think about that. The tailgate with? Uh, Justin, or the other Justin, I should say. The other Justin. Justin, <laughs> the other up? Justin. What's the score going to be today? Uh, three to one. Three to one. Yeah, three, three to, to one, one LAFC. And what's three it going to mean to get this win against Carson? Huge. I think this is going to be the first step towards uh, unblocking our little mental block that we seem to have against them. And uh, I think this is going to be a good... Uh, a good sign for us going forward. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we're here at the tailgate with Eric Chavez. Eric Chavez, what's the score going to be today? I'm hoping it's going to be three to one, LAFC, obviously. All right, what's it going to mean to beat Carson at home? At home, I mean, we've done it. A couple, we've done it when it means the most, but I think this season we need it. We obviously need to beat this team because they. They did some damage to us, 
but we're gonna get it and I think our team's determined right now, especially with a leader like Kaylini coming in and I mean we don't know if Bell's gonna play or not, but I'm hoping we got this dub and it's gonna mean a lot for us. Alright, we're at El Trafico with Capitan. Capitan, what's the score gonna be today? Uh a three one. Three one, and what's it gonna mean to beat Carson in our house? Uh, do you know what? It doesn't mean anything if we beat them in their house first. I think I think the home field advantage carries a lot of weight, so I feel like it's a given. I feel like our, our guys are going right to come there. play today, but I feel like that one at their house is, is the more important one for sure. Awesome, man. Thank you I, so I mean, much. All right, man. How much truth is in that? I mean, <laughs> hey, we're here yeah, I'll pause time. it for just a second because I wouldn't mind just getting your, your take on that. We can do it after, but like, and as meaningful as this was, and we're about halfway, and I don't, I really don't mean to interrupt, but no, you're how good. How much does that really mean on the great scheme of exercising the demons? Right, a year ago, when two years ago in 2020, when we played, you know, we we got a two nothing win. It was a pretty good, convincing win against the Galaxy. And two years later, we did it again, about the same time of the year. But you know what I mean? After we got spanked. A couple of times. Well, 2021 was not the case, and that's why I knew Bob Bradley would be gone in that tight 3 3 tie. But listen, I mean, it was beautiful and it was timely because everything else would have been a disaster. But how much a win over there really means, right? Oh, I it's... we'll have a chance to go. And you know what? How beautiful everyone's attitude is, even though how bad the games have been, we all are still very hype and say, no, 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 we're winning this game. We're winning 3 1. We're in a 3 0. Like, it was awesome, <laughs> man. You know, and then the vibe at the tent, Eric, you could tell everyone's having a good time. So, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, nobody. Nobody's gonna put the L. Nobody's gonna put that evil on us at the tailgate. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> That's right. nah, the colors are right. you know, really high. Really yeah. high. From every right, let's get into it, the rest of them. You know, let's and you know that yeah, okay, we, we love a good party. Three nothing, LAFC. Let's go. Three nothing. And what's it gonna mean to win El Trafico today? Everything. LAFC is LA. Let's go. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we're here at El Trafico. What's your name? My name's Kevin. Kevin, yeah. what's going to be the score today? Uh, I'm guessing if Gareth Bell starts 2-0, if he doesn't, 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. And what's it going to mean to beat... What Car what's it going to mean to you to beat Carson in our stadium? I mean, it's always an awesome thing when we beat him here. Last game was kind of a disappointment, I'm not going to lie. Let's see, I was very disappointed, guys. There was no heart. And I just hope that this game is completely different compared to the one in the U.S. Open Cup. We're here at El Trafico. I'm here with... Armando. Armando, what do you think the score is going to be today? It's going to be an interesting game. I don't like to get too crazy. I think it's going to be a tough game. I see a 3-2 LAFC. 3-2 LAFC. What's it going to mean to win against Carson? I think it's, I think it's, it's time for it to happen. Uh, I think we should play as good as we can, but we shouldn't, you know, it's a rivalry. So it's always going to be important, but we have to have a bigger picture. The season is what, is what matters. So of course we want to result today. Of course we want to be, you know, Carson. But I think that the biggest picture is make sure that we keep adding points that we can, that we can, you know, have a chance at the end of the season. Because the goal this season is not to beat Carson. The goal this season is the championship. That's awesome. It. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. man. All right. Yeah, how are you doing? Hey, we're here at the El Trafico tailgate. What's your name? Nelson Romero. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nelson, what's the score going to be today? I know him. Um, it's going to be 3 1. <laughs> All right, and what's it going to mean to win El Trafico in our home stadium? We have to play the best. Um, that's how you're going to win games. That's it. <laughs> Not be scared. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> I had to keep it low key though. with Nelson, like we didn't know him. That we, you know, yeah, <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is I love these though, right? Because yeah. we sit here and talk about it all the time. But when we're able to let everyone else talk, like what Voices has always been about on Spaces, it shows where everyone else's mind is and how they feel about it, and that we're not just being homers. When I'm sitting here mm -hmm. saying, "No, we can win this game after we've lost the two. We can win this three to one." So it's a beautiful thing, man. And I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed those. So thank you, Eric, for making those and, and, and doing that at the, at the thing. Oh man. Um, yeah. I mean, thank you to everybody that comes up and gives their opinion anytime at any game, like, please come, come find us and film a little thing. Like we, we just want to speak for everybody. And, and that's, you know, 
we have lots of different opinions. Even in this group, we have lots of different opinions. LAFC fans have different opinions. That's right. So let's get them all out there so we can all all think about it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a closer game than you would think, you know. And at the end there, I told Nick and Eric, I was like, oh, no, I've Nail seen biter. this film. I've seen this movie, and it's coming, right? You could kind of see the momentum shifting. Thankfully, this time, we had the better, you know, we had the better finish. And, and uh, ultimately, we were able to hold them to a 3-2 win. But I was not very comfortable at the end there. And it seemed to me that... The inevitable was happening again, and we were in destiny for another 3-3 tie, but I was wrong. No, no, we weren't, man. Listen, I called 3-1, but I was disappointed with the second goal, no doubt. Um, I feel had the that, energy you know, the... around this club is just hitting different. I feel mm-hmm. like it's hitting different, dude. Um, you know, every position is being challenged right now. No one is safe. Uh, well, no, that's not, that's a lie. We know who is safe. safe. We, yeah. we know the guys that are safe, but I'm saying the ones that are like, Hey, look, my job, they know it. They know who they mm-hmm. are. And I feel like we see it. And, um, it's a beautiful thing to see because this club is, is really dialed in. Um, uh, we, we have highlights. Uh, you want to go on and get in the highlights now and let's, let's talk, let's run through this game and talk yeah, about I mean, it. Let's, let's, let's go on and do that. This game because it was a really good game. It was a great game. Helen Acosta's got a kick. With the header. In the 16th El Trafico, it's taken 16 minutes for the deadlock to be broken. Sefuentes, who's got him? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. Derek Williams is on top of the six. Francier has no idea about the awareness nobody. of where he is behind a wide open header at the top of the six. Francier. An easy finish for no Sefuentes, who's having himself. A best 11 type of season. He is. You know, we talk about Sifu and what he does. And, you know, there's times that I feel like we have been hard on Sifu. But when you want to talk about a game that you can highlight a person, Sifu was it. Like, for me, I still, and this is going to be a, I, I feel like Vela was the man of the match. Even though Sifu got the two goals, for me, Vela was the match. He did so much for me that opened up them players to get that with the two beautiful assists. For me, it was a great thing. However, I have no problem with Sifu being the man of the match. Um, this is a highlight real games for him, being a trafico. Uh, the, the kid worked his butt off. Um, Eric, you have anything to say about uh, Sifu in, in this particular game? I mean, no, nothing that I, I think I didn't hit in the first five minutes is just, you know, it's more he's just seems to be growing as a player and growing as a player in this league. And, you know, I, I think what we're seeing now is probably going to be more the floor of him than the ceiling of him. I think there's a lot more to come from him and he's showing it to us. Celso, so, so what does this do for you for the future for Sifu? And if, you know, you're talking about him having, you know, eyes from South America – these type of games are the ones that continually raise his, his bar, and, and, and maybe yeah. this is what makes him move to that next level? Absolutely. To me, his stock was raised big time in this sequence of games that he's been really an anchor in our midfield, you know, creating chances, creating assists for the other players. So to me, he's getting there. And what was interesting is on his press conference afterwards, he's a player that thinks before he speaks. And there were some questions thrown at him. And that were like, how would you feel about the success? And it wasn't just like, oh, this is great. I got this. You know, it was this, oh, let me take this in and then give you a really good answer, very humble answer and how I still need to get better. And that's how I feel like he approaches every day and his training and everything that he does, you know, the the work ethic. And it's paying off big times. He's a very, very young guy. And we sometimes forget, you know, that he's still in development. And I believe he's going to become a bigger part of the Ecuadorian uh, national team hopefully this year and propel him to a role into Qatar I mean that is my dream uh, as I see this this story develop in front of our eyes you yeah. know absolute starter to me and this is a question that yeah. we likely need answers to right because you don't know who's going to come up and become the next best player or whatever the next elite player that you have and as a general manager you have to constantly be tuning in what your expectations are and what you're looking for into into your next signing because suddenly someone within your roster may be more demanding right 
of that role or of that spot that you might be considering spending money on. So it's a constant game of evaluation. And to me, metrics and analytics help at least standardize what you're looking for in players. People that don't believe in analytics, to me, are going to always be casting a smaller net of players that they're going to be after, right? It doesn't mean that they're not going to get really good players. But, you know, you're starting to see the results because statistically he's growing in every way that you measure him. As I said, he was the leader in uh, statistics, uh, in assists, and now he scores two goals against the Galaxy. What else can you expect from a DP10? That's right. So come for Delgado again. Attempted give and go to Chirito and Alvarez. Instead, it's Revelison, and it's Grosier! The LA Galaxy are going to play four midfielders, but four very you know, narrow within the width of the eight. If I may on that on that yeah, first no, let's one, let's talk about that goal. Yeah, 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 and 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 here's something that I think hopefully Giorgio Chiellini can really help with our team, and that's how slow they are to mark guys. If you look at the entire sequence, nobody's closing anybody down fast enough, and this is something I think a top level defender is going to look at the film and say. This is unacceptable. You guys cannot give people this much space. You cannot yeah. give them this much time before you get into them. Because mm -hmm. when you do that, you put all the pressure on my group, on my back line, when the midfielders aren't closing down and the fullbacks aren't yeah. closing down. Like, you really expose us. And now we mm -hmm. have to clean up this mess. And I think this is – if there's one thing Keeling, he really helps our squad. It's helping us close down the marking in these situations because I think – if you go back through, it's just a complete calamity of bad marking. Carlos Vela is the one coming sprinting, right, which is interesting. And he did a lot of that during the game, and, and I thought his defensive stance was really, really good. Gareth Bale, by the way, is an excellent defender uh, in that situation. So he's going to add an extra wrinkle of that, and more pressure. And, you know, he's an actually excellent defender for his position. So I'm excited to see what he does there. But, you know, exactly. And then Ryan Hollinshead is extremely in, right? He's basically a center back at this point and, and mashed in with Murillo and, and it obstructed the view of the goalkeeper, right? Because that was like a, just like a whiff. And then it goes in, which was a surprise to everybody. But to me, it was obstructive view because ultimately the right back's out of position, allowing the easy, you know, the easy cross. Right. No, it's very true. Very true. I have no, I have no critique. You know, why, why, why are we collapsing so much? Well, listen, we, these we crosses, do that. You know? We do that. And it, it worries me it that. in Orlando they, as well. Yeah, exactly. It worries me that you get, they get caught ball watching. It, it almost is like they're, they are so, okay, our team is going to do this. And I can just have a little bit of a relaxation for one second. And then it goes in and it's like, no, you cannot, bro. And it, it's wild, but um, it's happened a few times and we, we need to fix that. But hey, we did. And that's the point of the of the story. Like we we fixed it. We came back and we got another goal. So, so Palacios and Hollingshead could have a real impact on this game going forward. <laughs> you just a dime. Just a dime. I think they do a replay. Going all the way to the other side to mesh with Vela. Right? right behind Sasha Kleshkin. Oh my God. Now, no pressure on the ball whatsoever from Carlos Vela, so hit it with pace in front of Ooh. goal. You've got Hollingshead, Sefuentes, but time and time again, it's relentless pursuit of space. And Sefuentes is one of is. the smartest young players I've seen come into this league in a long, long time, and I will be shocked if it's in this league much longer. What a fantastic finish that was. There it is. They're already Two just the beauty. Just a beauty. Absolutely They're already beautiful. calling it. <laughs> Vela looked comfortable. And it's almost like th – this is what I think is so cool about what Vela's doing right now. He's like, I'm going to take some shots from outside. But I'm going to draw everyone in, and I know this, and I'm going to find. That's why we have 14 people who have – 14 different people that have scored because he attracts so much. And, and then he's putting these dimes of passes in that are just on the money. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, man, it's just it's just crazy to see. Uh, I'm really stoked with what Vela is doing. Yeah, he's he's shown up and he's embracing the city once again and embodying what Los Angeles means. And 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 he is still the marquee player for LAFC. Gareth Bale will add a second reference point for us. 
But, you know, how amazing it is that we now have these duo icons in our roster. You, you know, we're, we're not even talking about what they they mean in the history of this league, right? Like, playing together. I, I cannot wait to have these guys start meshing, which is going to be really interesting, by the way, because they play in a similar way, right? With the, the inside foot, they like that kind of position of right the right winger. But Vela, this season, if you look at his heat map, has really shifted to the left field a lot and has been very effective on that side. So the question is, is really that is how that's going to work, right? Where he's basically going to become the left winger and Gareth Bale will become the person on the right because that's what he's accustomed to. Um, but it's interesting to know how those two will end up playing together. Or is it going to be more of a rotation between the two? Yeah, I mean, Vel- Vela's kind of turning into a maestro out there. You know, he's not not so much the the guy chasing the golden boot, but he's the guy setting everything up and, and pulling the strings. And it's a good evolution for a guy who, with the experience that he has and the soccer IQ that he has, you know, he seems to be finding the right fit in the team that works. And, uh, you know, I've been very critical of him all year and, and last year as well. And he's, he's shut me up at this point. And so, you know, that's, that's what I can say. Nothing but compliments from me right now for him. No, very much. So let's finish it. He's out. been healthy, which I'm very, uh, you know, great, uh, grateful for, because I think that was the big gamble. If there's a, an uns- unspoken thing here is that the fact that I felt that contract sort of relied on his health and yeah but look he his looks body maintain yeah his body maintained uh, you know. today with him and gareth doing a little a little 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 chest bump and like teasing like bro if this is how they're going to interact and then hearing that they're doing really well in the lot bro oh. teams better teams he, better watch out he, he and Ilya seem to have some inside joke with like serious facial expression they're, they're, they're every team it's photo. Right, bro. It's yeah. great. We need to do a video of only the video of them <laughs> and put their faces through at the end of the season. All right, let's finish this out. <laughs> Just kidding. It How amazing was that? With by the way, now. progressive pass by Wando Opoko was on the money. The that yeah. That's Maybe that pass is a shot creation, right? Shot that creating action that nobody talks about. Games. Yeah. He was involved in both assists by Bell. Like and the He's the slide tackle was that Acosta? Yeah, I believe so. That was, but Juan right? Opoku is the guy that nobody's talking about that had essentially the pass before the assist, right? And the hockey the, assist. The, the, yeah, exactly, the hockey assist that is very, very important. And it's a metric that you can essentially measure a player's success with it very, very well. And to me, Kondo, when he came into the game, he added that dimension. He's extremely fast. His dreaming was on point. He changes directions really, really fast. And he was always finding Carlos Vela next to him in order to set things up for the other players. I mean... Kudos to Opoko, man. I think that the GOAT was well alive and he didn't get in the score sheet. But, um, you know, we are probably also only seeing the beginnings of what Kondo can do for us. This is really the first season that he's been healthy. You oh, know, yeah. so I think that between him and, you know, again, some of the, the, the marquee players we signed and some of the early veterans we signed that had a lot of MLS experience, you're kind of seeing all the elements of a winning roster, you know, something we haven't seen in Major League Soccer maybe since, you know, Terry on Rio, some of these guys were playing for the league when the league was a little more vanguard, if you may. But now, to me, LFC is the statement, right? It's the place that everybody wants to play. It is the team that probably everyone wants to essentially be, right, when they, when they face it. The question that I didn't get to ask Gareth Bale today, unfortunately, was do you feel like LFC today now has enough to compete with a European team? Okay, and I don't I don't think we can ask that question of anybody but of our coaches. But to me, that's really where we're going to know if we're respected as a league. If is the more we play European sides, B sides, not so great sides or really, really good sides. Right. Can we see 
the separation? Can we see well, LAFC just dominate a summer t- tournament like it was something else and they would just, just move on with it? Like, that's where I want to see the next step. And the biggest step to me of them all would be just constantly being on Come Ball, uh, you know, teams. If there's one thing that I would love to see more is more CONCACAF versus Come Ball, uh, you know, uh, tournaments because I think the measuring stick against common ball can really really start sort of showing the type of separation that some of our top teams have against well, you know brazilian league and the yeah. argentinian league no very and very true and that's that's what i wanted to say before we before we start getting carried away with about european teams to play a european team you have to be at a common ball team and that's it yeah. you know and and you start and those are easy at, to set up we had the florida cup that they invited no. a bunch of brazil teams and, and not only that to do that first you know we're going to have to beat a Liga MX team, which are also, you know, nothing, nothing to, nothing to sneeze at, you know, it, hopefully we're getting closer to a point where, you know, when they have a down, a down season and our teams have a high season, we're going to be going through like Seattle did this year. But yeah, no, I would, I would love to see us square off against one of the South American powerhouses. Obviously I'd love to see us play Palmeiras, Sao Paulo, Corinthians, you know, Boca Pocahontas. Juniors, yeah, um, yep. you know. And, River, although we, we'd have River, a better but, time against them right now than they are. But, uh, you know, Flamengo, I mean, imagine that another yeah, one. So, I mean, so much energy has been spent now, you know, creating these secondary conca leagues and, you know, thinking about how we can reach more eyeballs and create more opportunities. You know, all of this is coming, and to me, the lack of coordination between the two conferences that are sort of in a line in the same geography, right? Uh, and is is, I mean, is sort of uh you know, it's sort of cringe. Like I hate using that word, but it's cringe. And one of the questions uh, today cringe. during the bail yeah, I right, hate that cringe. word, dude. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm yeah. sorry. Never mind. You know why you know why I used it, right? Because yeah, I'm you sorry, know, I can't I just our, like our okay, my, bad. Cringe. my bad. Yeah, I'm back. No, but you know you know what I'm talking about. Like it, it's just um, I, I, but I think it starts with having that, um, you know, those two leagues sort of meshing more. And uh, I mean, the, the, the Liga MX, uh, mesh is almost like shoving down our throats. Whereas you sort of ignore that Argentine players are the second population in major league soccer, or actually third, if you consider Canada. So like, yeah. So why are you not inviting these teams to just come here and play a lot more games, you know? Right. Um, you know, against our our teams and and making and paying. Them I mean, for we're, those games. we're gonna have to start getting into like governing body politics on there. You know, we it's a rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, research. man. But you know, and this is why you end up with leagues cup and you know, and some fucking secondary thing that come. You know, Concacaf is gonna put together, and we're never gonna be measured against. You know, some of these South American players. But we, yeah, you know, the the, the front offices are calling each other and doing deals all the time. You know what I mean? And Palmeiras is now a buyer, and you know we. And Sao Paulo is now a seller to Austin FC. That is a hot market, and those channels are open. So why not put the teams to play together? You know, and I think it's a matter of time. Aviation is getting better. You've got private aviation everywhere. People are flying. You know, uh, you know yeah. When they aviation. asked, but when they ask? asked Gareth today about, oh, how's it going to be to fly? He's like, I mean, I'm here, dude. Like, I'm here. So you know, <laughs> um, I see people are still asking about JT. He he is coming. I just got off the phone with again. Y'all see me writing with his. Uh, with his uh, assistant, he is still in a ton of interviews. Um, they've apologized. They said he will be here within 15 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, man, I take him for man. their word. I mean, he said he's going to be here. I take him for his word. And when he does, we'll ask the questions. Time might have got cut down a little bit, but it's it's okay, man. The guy is the super busy, busy right, right now. now he has he has a lot going on. And uh, truth of the matter, we we snuck in this probably. Uh, a month ago when this was done and he he had no idea that this is going to be um <laughs> probably going at, and he's he's just honoring his commitment so it's a really big ups for him honoring that commitment and so i appreciate that so when he comes on dude we'll just jump right out of it and cut to that but until then let's let's move on with the program um uh you know um the the pictures of Edward were I just want to say this real fast were amazing oh. that everybody was putting right like the like all his stuff that he did before talking all the trash on LAFC and thirty two fifty two and then that picture of him standing there looking at the thirty two fifty two bro it was beautiful it was oh amazing. the f bombs flying at him from the stands was nonstop <clears throat> when he went over but, to touch by the ball it was just f bomb f bomb but i do want to say something moves. but i do want to say something the racist stuff is ridiculous man like come on bro like it's a game 
No one needs to take it that far. We don't like Carson. They don't like us. But to be racist or say anything that's disrespectful like that about anyone's family, mom, color, religion is a joke. And it shouldn't be done. And that is disappointing. I'm just going to throw that out there real quick because it's been being said and it's like something we should 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 cover. Um, Now, the next game is going to be at Nashville, man. So LAFC is going to go to Nashville. We're going to go and see what their stadium is like. First time LAFC will actually be in their new stadium. Um, Y'all excited about this game or? Yeah, I'm always always say Nashville is a. It's a it's a defensive defensive team that's that's built that way. And, you know, we're going to see how we intend to go on the road to their stadium and try to get out of there with some points. It's it's kind of one of those puzzles that every team goes at. They're usually good at home. I think uh, their their form has dipped in the last few months and they're they're not as solid as they have been. Hopefully that keeps up with us and, you know, we can we can get out of there with with some points. But I mean, you know, we. Our team just seems to be playing better and better and better. So, you know, I'm not I, – I don't lack confidence that we're – you know, that we can't come out of there with one to three points. Celso, where are you at with this? You know, we – we uh, they, they have Walker Zimmerman, the one that we let get away, that everybody was all up in arms. We let him go for a million dollars. He's now a DP for them. Um, they're not looking as promising as they were last year. So where, where do you have Nashville fallen – yeah, so they're very Mukhtar dependent. So when Mukhtar's on, we know they're on. And, of course, they have Walker Zimmerman in the back. Um, you know, again, he's the one that got away. And our defense is still sort of reeling from there. I don't believe Chiellini is the answer long term to the, walk, uh, the Walker Zimmerman trade. Really? And uh, Murillo has been sort of the, you know, the, the replacement for him. And, and, you know, you see the good and the bad from Murillo. I really like him as a player. But, you know, I don't believe that he is uh, a worthy replacement. And it opens the question whether there's still one more move to be made in that center back position, right? Because you saw what happened, you know, essentially in the last game. And Murillo could continue to start. If anything, Ibeaga may lose his job, which I think it's a crime, by the way. He's playing really, really good ball. But to me, I'm still not 100% sure if our center backs can go up against a team like Nashville in their house against a very, very good defense, right? And it's going to be the fourth sort of real test that we have have against a true Western con- Conference um, contender in their side of uh, in our side of the bracket. And I expect a win because we have a lot of momentum. And this is the first match between these two teams. So there's absolutely no history between them. And we are the hot team right now. And I've seen these measure sticks over and over again now to say that you need to at least win one of these big games on the road so that people can see that you're for real. Now, the teams that we've beaten have been okay, but they've all been Eastern Conference powers. And I don't know if we're still ready for some of these games away, right, that eventually you may need to play in a playoff game, right? And we saw what happened against Colorado, and we saw what happened against even Vancouver in a game that I think we're just mentally checked out. But Nashville is a big test. You had a lot of energy that was spent in this El Trafico and everything that we went through this week. So is the mental fatigue is going to show up and Nashville is just going to plow through it because they're more well-prepared, more dialed in in what they do well. So trap game, I don't know if it's called a trap game, but I think we have a very, very uphill battle here. And if we come out of there with one point, great. But I think we should win and we should aim to win this game as well. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm a little bit on the different side of that, of course, Celso. Uh, you know how you I, feel I, about Nashville. Tell us how you no, feel about no, Nashville. No, no, no. You know, look, Trashville is Trashville. You know what I mean? Look, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a Southern thing, man. And, you know, look, we, we have a deep. It's a Memphis deep, thing. Deep, yeah, deep problems me. with some. No, I'm, I'm, no, listen, I, I think it's amazing what Nashville has done. And even though I'm not a Nashville fan, I, I enjoy what they're doing for U.S. soccer. Right. But uh I think last year they were a lot more dangerous. This year I've seen them blow some games, you know, and they just got really blown out at, at their stadium. Uh, but to your point, that could make them fight harder, right? They just got blown out. They're now looking to um, come back at them and, and really make something happen. So I can see I, I can see your point on that. Um, but, you know, look, I, I think that we have the team to do it. And I think, um, you know, look at soccer, anything can happen any day. A team can wake up and be just not there for that, for that, 
for that game. Uh, but but I think um, even our bench on, on the best of days can beat the best of teams here in the MLS. I, I do think we're that deep, and I think that we can. Um, I know a lot of people don't see the deepness of this team like that, but I really do think that we can win. And, um, uh, you know um, – yeah, I think it's uh I think it's kind of interesting because this whole season, you know, since since our last off season was pretty chaotic, you know, with uh we we kind of were like, all right, let let's see what this team's gonna look like the first ten games, you know, and then assess an opinion, and then it's like, all right, this first ten games is kind of a cakewalk schedule. Let's see what the next ten games have, and now we're kind of at a point with these new high powered signings. Like our team is metamorphosizing into what it's going to be at the end of the year. And we're kind of back at a whole, at, a, at the third point of let's see what these next 10 games are now. Cause now we have Chiellini helping organize things. Now that we have bail on the attack, what we're going to see out of our team, the next 10 ga- games is almost certainly going to be much different than we've seen the first 10 games, yeah. just structurally or how they, you know, how they end up interacting with each other. So we're kind of back to like, you know, we kind of have to see what happens here. And if if they keep the the energy and the spirit and the attitude that they've had the last 10 games, they're only going to get better. And we're going to see like the beginning of, of an absolute juggernaut coming through. But nothing in this world is given. And yeah, as, as Celso always said, we have to manage our expectations. You know, there's always... There's always going to be things thrown in our way. And, you know, some of our some of our hopes and dreams could get shattered and they're going to have to dig deep and they're going to have to gut it out. But it's it, it's hard. To, it's hard to say what Nashville is going to look like. But we have these guys warming up with us now. We could see Bale. We could see Chiellini realistically show up in that game. And what's that going to look like? You know, it's and then and then what's what's the what's it going to look like after that so we're we're going to see all of it i mean they got now now question do you think do you worked. think that we will see either one of the new additions do you think that we will see a Kalini or a gareth i you know i i i think i think it's possible we see them i think it's much more likely we see them against sporting kansas city the week after like sporting mm-hmm. kansas city i i, I pegged last week that's when we'll see bail Although I also thought we would see Chiellini on limited minutes before we have. So, you know, it's it's hard to say in Nashville, but I, I think if not in Nashville, Sporting KC is where I see both of them coming through. Not quite as strong of an opponent. I think with Nashville, it's a big enough team that, you know, they're really going to want to stick to like the tied, tried and tested group that's been pulling us the last 10 games. I think we're going to see our same normal lineups that have been doing it for us in that game. And Celso, where are you at on this, man? Do you, do you see, go ahead. No, I said the concern to me is if we're going to start trying to change our style and what has worked in for us in order to accommodate for the two incoming players. I don't think that's a concern on the defensive side of the ball because it's very system driven. And I even asked Maxime Cripple that question. Hey, you got a lot of new bodies in front of you. You know, how do you manage it? And he's like, hey, so long as they understand the system and we know each other individually, which will happen over time, we should be okay. So Chiellini should actually add more than he would take from that defensive side, right? But at the same time, with Bale, like he's still getting acclimated back to playing uh, on a regular basis. And these guys and are in season form. He right? said he that said today. That today. He goes, I need so to get why? Fit. Why do you, you know, don't expect him to suit up or play meaningful minutes for us any time between like now and like maybe two weeks from now. I, mean, I don't be think honest. that the player will be ready bit until like essentially three weeks. Yeah, personally, I prefer that. I sort of want them to have their first game at the bank. Yeah, and that might be the case. I think if anything, you wait for Seattle. That's a big, big um, game that we need to win and need to show our strength and need to show that everything is coming together. But you might want to ease in and give him 10 minutes the game before that so he's full strength, right? So you want him at that game 100%, which means that the first time we saw Vela play off of some injuries and he played like 10 minutes here and there, he looked awful. His first, his first touch was off. He was, you know, essentially he looked like bigger than everybody else, essentially, just slow. And now, like, he's humming. So you need to give these guys a month or two. And with age, you actually need them a little bit more time in order for them to get to that point where they're humming. And that's no, the you problem, know. you know what I mean? You just don't have that much time. you got to get this guy acclimated when everybody's already sort of mid-season format. No, fair. And I, I can see Eric's point, having him start at, uh, at um, uh, Sporting. City. 
Yeah, sporting and, and let him get a little bit of minutes is into uh, to Celso's point. Have him just get available? in maybe the last 15, 20 minutes, get his legs ready, see how the guys are moving on there. You've been practicing. Now you get a little full game. You come to the bank against uh, Seattle. You play the whole time, and then you're ready. You Now you're locked in, you know? Um, yeah, I, I mean, like it. You go 75 hard, right, and yeah. you get subbed in because, you know, you're still going to be part of a rotation of players, and maybe a Tajur Shirati can come and spell you in the middle of the game. Uh, you know, and that's, to me, is a player that – I hope doesn't lose his spot on the rotation. I think that there's a lot that he can still bring to us. And, you know, hopefully we'll see where he goes. But looks like we have. Um, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Us. So, look, this is a big Strange deal for gears. the Voices of the Black and Gold today. This interview I'm really excited about. So let's just go on and get into it. Without further ado, let's introduce our co-president, general manager of the Black and Gold, Los Angeles Football Club, John hey. Thornton. John, thank you for coming and joining yes. us, man. We appreciate yes. you so much for taking the time. I know that you're super busy with everything, so thank you so much for joining us here at, at Voices of the Black and Gold. It's uh, it's my pleasure. It's great to be here with you all, and uh, I'm excited. All right. So, yeah, man, uh, first, thanks to Larry, because he got you to come and, and, and you saying, yeah, but uh, it's a big deal for us here at the Voices of the Black and Gold. And John, you've done an amazing job this year. You know, last year was a bit hard for us and the supporters asked a lot out of you guys mm -hmm. and you delivered in a huge way. I mean, um, you know, we asked you for leaders. You brought leaders. We asked you for uh, veterans. You brought them. And not only did you do that, you brought in some, I mean, high caliber superstars with Gareth and, and, um, and Giorgio. Uh, and to be fair, you've answered a lot of questions about how you got them and things. So I'm going to just skip right into a question about the DP. Uh, you've been very open in saying that we're looking for an attacking DP, but when you got Gareth, did things change on what we might look for now in a DP or are we still the same mindset? Yeah, well, I think, the all of these decisions and considerations are never done in isolation so does gareth inform what the what the right decision would be if we do sign a dp absolutely and so i would say i don't think it has led to a significant departure from plan but certainly every with every week every game we have more information as to what we feel like this team needs to improve our chances of succeeding. So that's a long-winded way of saying, yes, it does have an impact. I've always been open in saying, I think we would be wise to invest in the attacking part of the field. What players like Carlos, Gareth, the players that we already have across the front line, this is unique in that it may afford us an opportunity to do maybe something in midfield. So we're, we have a, a bit of a, broader scope in terms of what we're looking for but i would still bet that it would be in the, one of the attacking positions very well enough um we're going against nashville which gave a dp contract to an existing player how do you feel about that and again this is a little bit of an added bonus question here but how do you feel about giving uh, existing players designated player contracts yeah i think each team and each player is a case-by-case -case basis so i think for Nashville, making Walker their DP was the right decision for them. He's sort of the bedrock of everything they are. And each club has a different identity as to what that cornerstone piece would be. Um, you know, Carlos was already a DP. He is that cornerstone piece for us in our history. We extended him as a DP. You know, we had talks with players like Edward Atuesta. Were he to stay, would he have been a DP? I would say more than likely he would have been a DP had we not found an agreement to to sell him. So all of these are on a case-by-case -case basis. And what I would say, what we have done at every level of our roster is if a player outperforms his contract, he gets rewarded. And we mm -hmm. try to be as proactive as possible in extending, renewing guys, giving them what they deserve through their play for LAFC. Yeah, John Thornton joined us here on the VOBG podcast, yeah. and I had a chance to to meet you a little bit earlier uh, in the uh, Gareth Bale and Vale, if you may. Uh, we'll, shift, we'll shift a little bit of gears and talk about player analytics. I'm sure uh, that's something that you and your team are constantly looking at it. And what are some of the metrics that you and your team are actually using and currently using to evaluate your incoming talent? You know, for example, you take Ely Sanchez. What is these statistical 
story behind that, you know, he's bringing a tremendous impact to this team in so far in 2022. You know, what is it that he brings to us that only the metrics are showing that you knew it ahead of time? And tell me, how did Peter Verms let him go? Let that's, it go. A massive, massive <laughs> um, sign. I can't speak to Kansas City's decision making other than to say I'm grateful for whatever the reasons they had. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and uh, and having said that, Elia was a free agent, so um, I, I, yes. I don't know the specifics of his conversations with Kansas City, but he was available as a free agent. And we're certainly grateful for what he can bring. And I think, uh, Nick, you mentioned some of the you know learnings from last year as to what we felt we needed. And Elia fit perfectly because we knew we were selling Edward, who was a fantastic player for LAFC. But Elia is a different type of player that plays as that number six role in that he is, um, not to say Edward was not disciplined, but but Elie is a much more disciplined six. And I think that really was what Steve was looking for um, as more of a facilitator. So Edward would do things, dribble three guys and hit a 60-yard pass to Carlos and he'd score. And these very eye-catching things that, uh, Celso, as you talk about, you don't need data to see that. That's just what, uh, that's, yeah. I call it obvious to Stevie Wonder that it just is there for um, – it, it's so glaringly obvious. What Elie brings is a real knowledge of the position and also um, a facilitator of the play, and that might be with the ball. It's also positionally how he can adjust and allow, whether it's Sifu, whether it's Latif, whether it's Kellen, um, to balance and their interdependent movements is, is a big part of what we do in our midfield. He is – one of the best people and examples of a professional that I have seen in our league. And yes. that is certainly something that we have been intentional about finding in order to show our young guys, like this is the path you need to follow. And he's a phenomenal example. You know, one quick anecdote, he, we have a really exciting uh, player in our under 17s who plays his position named Brian Moyado, who is now in the U S national team. And he has a, an incredibly bright future, but Elie takes time to go and watch his training sessions to sit down with him afterwards. And it was facilitated by our staff and our technical director, Marco Garces, but that's the type of thing that Elie does and that Elie brings that stats don't show that what stats right. do show about Elie is his ability to what we do, what we call break lines. So we get down to a granular level as to when Elie plays a pass forward, how many players of the opposition does he remove from the play? So if he picks up the ball and he hits a, um, a line breaking pass to Carlos and it bypasses their three midfield and their strikers in this case, we actually tabulate that and we have a, um, a software platform that counts how many defenders a midfielder bypasses and he is very good at that. And that's a big part of how we play. And, and once you know to look for it, you see it. But that is just one example of what data would show you is Elia's strength. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really good. yeah, yeah. So kind of shifting gears a bit on this one, you know, our, our off season, definitely the with amongst the fans, there was almost a minor meltdown. What were we doing? And uh, I, I think at this point, you've silenced any doubter that was there. But uh how does how does fan influence does it affect your decisions at all? Do you take into consideration um, like like how how do the fans like affect your decisions at all or do they? Um, yeah, it's a good question, um, and I don't know whether this is the answer people want to hear or not. Just a truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess that's always my <laughs> my policy. What I would say is that from day one, my goal is to recognize that supporters are the lifeblood of any good club. And we are certainly like, when you think about how important supporters are to a club, I don't think there is a club that I have come across like LAFC that takes its supporters into account when they make almost uh, basically every decision. Who's the right DP? How do we want to represent LA? Is the team we're putting on the field a product that someone from LA in its diverse backgrounds and with its incredible diversity could come to our stadium and see a team that they can readily identify with. So that is for sure a part of every single decision we make. Now, having said that, my responsibility also is not to blow in the wind with trend and rather be very diligent and 
um, disciplined in our strategy to deliver that. So in pro sports, you win, you lose, and it's like this. Now, as an example, you take last year and you could say LAFC for the first time ever didn't make playoffs. Let's uproot everything and start over. And I'm sure that was some people's opinion as to what was required. What we decided based on a very thoughtful and painstaking process that we went through as a postmortem of the season was what does this need? And it was a bit more than a tr- than a tweak. It wasn't just minor. Yeah. There was yeah. definitely, but it, it's about that balance. And, you know, and I also understand because I am also a fan of the Dodgers, but I also recognize I don't know ev- all the information that Andrew Friedman and Dave Roberts have to hand when they make a decision. And right. so I can understand when fans get frustrated. I like that we are such an ambitious club that has ha- that has tasted success but wants more and i i don't see that as pressure I, I i see that as a pleasure of being a part of a a club that's not just here to make up numbers but there is real uh expectation to deliver success and so my job is actually to not get too caught up in noise but rather take appropriate feedback a big part of my job is to deliver what the supporters want. So I I think I'm answering your question and saying for sure, for sure it comes into account. Um, Candidly, do I read every Reddit post and people telling me that I'm awful and uh, (laughs) that the club stinks and all the rest of it? No. And I also don't read it now when I'm assuming they think we're great. So um, it's just oh, yeah. about you're, having... you're a god now, so don't worry. No, yeah, well, there. <laughs> I know how short lived that can be. Um, <laughs> and so, look, I've got a, an amazing staff. I've got a very, we have a very supportive group of owners. And I also know that in my conversation with supporters that I do on a regular basis, uh, at a, at a regular cadence throughout the year, I do know they appreciate the hard work that goes in. And I'm not talking about me. I think they appreciate and understand that not every club allows supporters to come to training um, at the right times. They, that they um, going back to day one, that they allow supporters to design their whole section, to choose what beer they have, to have this real relationship. But I think that's been an, an incredibly positive one, but in all of our relationships, as you get, the closer you get, there's often friction, but I think it's been, uh, if there has been any conflict, it's been constructive. It really has. You guys have done a great job trying to include uh, fans. You know, look, I'm in Hawaii. I've been traveling forever and never have missed an LAFC game from day one. And, um, you know, to be fair, we have people in here that are from Uruguay that are in Ireland, uh, Scotland. I mean, and, and so it just shows what you guys have built. So that's a big that's a big up to you guys, John. I mean, you guys have done a great job trying to make sure that we are in the in, in the know. Um, and so we do appreciate with that, you know, so, so go ahead. Absolutely. Man. And, and listen, I think your job more than anything is to try to make everybody happy. And, you know, if, if you know that there's one thing it's really hard to do is make everyone happy, but talk to us a little bit about the influence that the coaching staff have on your decisions and how important it is for you to be in the same page with them. I'll give you an example. Mark Dos Santos works very close with Donio Herring, which uh, uh, was recently waived by Los Angeles. Um, you know, I see also the Los Angeles Galaxy ball brought a lot of the players that Greg Vanny was used to having with him in Toronto to play with him. So kind of like his guys, if you may. But talk to us a little bit about having, you know, now that Bob Bradley's gone and, and you have a new a, a new staff, you know, being on the same page with those guys. You mentioned a little bit already with Ily Sanchez and what you, you were looking for, what Dolo was looking for. But how is that partnership working out and how important it is that it, ha- it, 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 it your guys are all thinking together? Yeah, I've, I've heard it said that the most important relationship in a sports organization is that uh, the, the relationship between the general manager and the coach. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. You could maybe make the argument that it's coach with his captain or, or others. Regardless, it's very important. And I think while the coaches are different, our process and way of working has not changed. So we do not have a soccer czar that decides everything in a vacuum and has autonomy to do whatever they want. There are checks and balances put in place 
um, that ensure that we are working in a way that is reflective of a collaborative culture. And so the importance of me being on the same page with Steve, with our coaches, I mean, we've had, you know, Mark was our coach. He left, he came back. We've had new coaches come in this year. And I think one thing that is affirming of how we work, and I'm not saying this is the only way to work, but the way we work is that people notice when they come from another club and they come here, they are surprised whether this is our new technical director, our new goalie coach, but they are surprised at the level of collaboration that takes place when we make player decisions. So as we now are talking, you started off asking about the DP, every single coach, every single scout, everybody is aware of everybody we're talking about and everybody has a voice. Now, are some voices weighted a little bit more heavily than others? For sure. That's part of, yes. you know, an organizational dynamic, but mm -hmm. Everybody has a say and we have meetings. It's not me and Steve and we lock a door. It's not me telling Steve, this is who we're signing. It's not Steve telling me who we're signing. It's a, it's a collaborative process that again, as I mentioned before, we're humans, there can be friction, there can be uh, aggressive conversation, but we are on the same page. We all want the same thing, which is success for LAFC. And I've always said, and I'm stealing this from Steve jobs, <laughs> it doesn't we all as long as we all agree that we're going in this direction like you can discuss the route right like how do we get there which player what's the profile as long as we're all on the same page and we start without foundation of where we want to go that where is acceptable as long as we're not saying okay i'm trying to go to san francisco you're going to san diego like that is a dysfunction and thankfully we do not have that uh steve is which was part of why he was the right choice was he understood that he'd been a part of our culture for a year. He knew how we made decisions and that also was his nature. Steve is not a control freak who wants to say, you know, he, he wants the requisite level of control that you would want as a head coach, but no more. And everybody, you know, stays in their lane. And then, and then it blurs when you have this Venn diagram of decision makers that, that come together. Awesome. Yeah. If I can uh, kind of throw one more, one more at you, it's more uh, MLS is a very complicated uh, salary cap structure with designated players. Now the U22, TAM, JAM, mm -hmm. most people in MLS have no idea how any of it works. So, you know, for me personally, I, I love it. I'm fascinated by it. And a small segment, how do you feel about the salary cap rules? Do you think, uh, they're almost needlessly complicated or do you enjoy the kind of game within a game that it, that it gives us? Uh, both. I think, uh, I've, you know, we, I know I've been in this league since 2005 as a player. Then I was an executive of the players association. And now, uh, in these various roles that I've had at, at LAFC. So I know the rules. Um, I also know that, it seems much easier to just flick a switch and simplify something. It's a lot harder in practice, given that you have existing contracts, you have existing rules. You can't just sort of turn a page and ignore what's what's happened previously. So we have a great staff that knows the rules, um, that has experience in the league, that enables us to make good, wise, and judicious decisions. And so would I – personally have a few suggestions as to how we can simplify things to make things potentially better and easier. Yes. And there are forums in which we can talk to the league and share these things, which I do. And, but also I understand why some of the rules are in place. Um, and ultimately these decisions are made by owners with input from us. Um, so to piggyback off that, you know, over the weekend, we seen that the sporting director, Ernst Tanner, was like, he, he put a thing, an interview out that he felt fooled uh, that we got them on Tam's deal. When you see stuff like that, does that just sort of like what, what kind of response do you even have to that? Like fooled? Like you sort of went by the rules. You didn't do anything that no one else couldn't do. So how could they be fooled? Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know the full extent of the the comments. I suppose given that I know, like, I don't even, given that I know we didn't cheat, I guess it's a compliment. Yeah. I right? think it is too. I think you it's know, a compliment. Um, I mean, you outgame, our, you outgame them in five yeah, years. Well, our, our 
integrity and how we operate as a club is like we take that incredibly seriously. I personally take that seriously. Larry, as our co-president, takes that seriously. Our CFO, our owners, we take that incredibly seriously. So any sort of implication that we're doing anything other than um, what is fully above board is, you know, completely misguided representation and is frankly insulting um, and disrespectful, frankly, to the player, to the club. And and to the league, actually, because what you're basically saying to the league office is you have a club that totally duped you, which so frankly, it's just this, you know, it's this. I don't pay much attention to it. But if that is what was implied and look, I I would happily like we actually have a portal that all GMs have access to that gives you the contract. So it's not like you can't hide. I mean, I suppose if so, I'll, I'll flip it a different way. I wish I personally had enough money to even have the ethical <laughs> conversation and question to be like, how am I going to pay Gareth Bale an extra $8 million from my pocket from some <laughs> offshore account? Like, I'm unfortunately not in a position to even have that ethical dilemma, which I know the answer would be I wouldn't do it anyways. But like, I suppose the only way I could do it is if one of our owners, which I know their integrity and their honesty, were willing to do something – and lie about it consi- constantly to the league and what have you. So I, I don't even understand the implication. Yeah. I think I can understand the, and look, like I was surprised that we did it, right? Like it was just something that I was saying like, oh, coming oh, yeah. into the season, uh, once the window opens, we're going to sign um, a guy that's won a World Cup uh, that's just played in the Italian Cup final. And then uh, the current Champions League winner is going to come on. Ta- like, I was surprised too. So I understand the, the sort of reaction, but then any implication that it was anything other than us taking advantage of the stage we offer and the opportunity, our city and our yeah, supporters yeah. and whatever that we offer these players, there's any insinuation that is anything other than that. It's just ridiculous. And I mean, yeah. it's also was at the press conference today, but what I said, when I introduced, I don't call it an introduction. Gareth is already here, but mm-hmm. I, I thank everybody at LAFC who has built something that now makes this a destination of choice. And that's not me. That's our supporters. I thank them. That's our owners. That's our staff. And frankly, it's our players too. Like, absolutely. I have no, but it's you, but it's you, you did a good job getting you. You're you're raising the standard. He he said you a lot. You did a, you did a big job. This is a comment of someone that knows that the standard has been raised. And even if you're a, a, a winning organization on the other side, you're going to have to put a little bit more effort to put players in and, and want them to play there. And this is happening in other sports. And I believe Los Angeles uh, is just seeing this too, like, you know, in, in, in a major league soccer. Yeah. True. And I think just the last point is I, I think I, I can't help but th- actually I know this because they both said it. They know we're in first place, right? Like <laughs> they want to win. They so, want to win. Yeah, so that was also... And they came so, here and parked the bus. I'll never forget the game. <laughs> yeah. And, and Mama Dufal let us know about it. You remember that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thank everybody that has been a part of LAFC, and that's from supporters to owners, everybody, that now this is a, a destination of choice. And I think if we do this right and continue to build, then we'll only see more of this. Yeah, listen, uh, you're a well, pioneer. God, you're you. doing something nobody else does. That's how I see yeah. you. And now people are going to have to do what you know you, what you just carved for them. They, and, this is and how I'll... things change. Change comes when someone does something that nobody else expects them to. So great job. Yeah, right. I think I think history is going to look at this as one of the greatest transfer windows of any team in the 26 years of MLS. So congratulations for kind of being the architect and the masterminder or the guy that made that all happen. And, uh, you know, really, really, we're, we all couldn't be more happy with it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to well, let you, I'm going to let you go, John, but I got one last question. The comments are going crazy. Everybody wants to know what is going on with Arango. It's up to you. If you want to, if you want to answer yeah. the question, everybody's saying Arango, Arango, please ask about Arango. So I'm asking you about Arango. Yeah, sure. So obviously, uh, Arango just scored the game winner in El Clasico. <laughs> He has been scoring on a regular basis and he's been incredible since he's been here. And we, we recognize that and, you know, not just for Arango, but there's going to be real competition for places. And I think that is why we're seeing these performances from people is that there is real competition. That competition is going to increase when Brian comes back from injury, 
when Bale gets up to speed, when Carlos continues his form, to Jerry Schrade's coming back. You, you know, Danny Masovsky had a uh, had an unfortunate injury, but yeah, Mahala who helped us win the game. So it's great, and I want to see that everywhere across the field. But no, Chicho has been has an incredible goal scoring record since he's been here. He's been a, a great signing for us. He's a great guy. Um, he's been a a great soldier. I mean, he he just does everything that's asked. So um, I trust that I asked the question. I think I think it, it touches on a theme though. Is like what what is what explain why you're doing all these things. Everything is done to win, right? Like, how do we improve our team? And we saw these two guys as additions to a strong group. This is not resetting about this is this group is really strong, and Arango's a part of that. And now, how do we add pieces? And every subsequent decision we make is 100% done with the question: Is this going to help us win now and into the future? And that's how we make our decisions. Well, John, you have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so yeah. much for taking time. I know you are one of the busiest guys right now, so thank you so much for taking where, time and sitting uh, down there with us. Where are you in Hawaii? I'm in Oahu. Nice. Yeah. And you come back for games? Uh, so so I've lived in California for 20-plus years. Uh, my wife is from here. We had our kid the, in um, the year of the 18th, so I didn't make the to okay. an LAFC match then. I have oh. not been to an LAFC match. Have never missed one though. Okay. Um, so it's a shame because I had a little bitty baby, and then we were traveling. But uh, yeah. as I was traveling around the United States, we would pull over and make sure I had Wi-Fi to watch it. That's Wife awesome. is completely uh, understanding. She lets me do it, and uh, we will be at a game on the 18th in September. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, man, the, the fact that you came on our show, we just started on spaces a year ago. And the fact that you came on here to talk with us means a lot. So I love, really, really uh, appreciate that. I love these conversations. And I think our supporters and your listeners, they deserve, you know, real talk from us. And that's always been a part of our DNA from the beginning. Um, I would just encourage you. Um, I say that football is the most important of the less important things. So babies, wives, things like that, you're 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 doing right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, she she uh she she's like, okay, what day is your game? All right, we gotta travel around this day. And I'm like, thanks, babe. I appreciate yeah. that. So she's like she, conversations she I have at my own house. <laughs> she yeah, completely absolutely. understands. We all have them, man. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, where, yeah. Eric and Celsa, where are you? Where are you guys? I, um, I'm in Atwater Village on the east side. Oh, um, you're a hipster. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I've, I've I've been on this side of town. He's since, also Palmeiras uh, fan. Four. Just, ah, yes. and uh, my my wife is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Kind of rekindled okay. her love because it gets so serious there that there's so much tragedy associated that she didn't want anything to do with a sport like that. Right. Yeah. Came to a game here on a date, saw the tailgating and kids and families, and fell in love with the game again. Yeah. And uh, for myself, I'm a season ticket holder from the very first game. I've missed four home games across all competition since LAFC has started. Awesome. Yeah, well, I think yeah. another thing, like when you talk about what sort of your wife saw as an issue with going and supporting live football, um, I also credit our supporters. They're a class act. Even after Friday, I get all the reports. Were there any incidents and what have you? And that that yeah. those intense rivalries are ripe for things to happen and our supporters are super you, you know the what, what happened at uh, i think it was the atlas game earlier this year i think really changed a lot for mls supporters groups oh, of really yeah. seeing well, we don't want this in our game we, right. we love the rivalry but we want it to be nice and i i guess the last thing my wife is from a paul maris family three generations oh, wow. so when a oh. twesta went there I was able to get our whole family a Twesta LAFC jerseys. We awesome. went to Allianz Park down there. Oh, my Twesta jersey. Everybody's excited. This is last Christmas. And uh, this this was a Christmas gift for me with my wife's family, me and for the first time that will always be special awesome. that this happened. Yeah, I talked to Edward uh, not long ago. He's doing well. Good. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, living he's... in the city that I was born, in Sao Paulo. You know, again, I've been living in LA now for a very long time. I'm close to Thousand Oaks. I'm also a season ticket holder. It's my third year. Started just basically taking my daughter to a game. The Miami game was the first one for me. Uh, you know, and again, I fell in love with opener, the environment. Our opener. Yeah, the first game essentially that we had against them. That yeah. was the first game that I saw it live, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to be a part of this more closely. And you know, the rest is history. I mean, the environment. Uh, you know, the 
it embodies what Los Angeles meant to me as a transplant coming into the city about 15 years ago. So to yeah. me, all the elements are here to make this what this brand, I'm going to call it a brand, this team represents, you know, it's, it's a lot about what this community is, what this place that we call Los Angeles means for all yeah. of us. That's our, that's been our goal. Like we have said, we want to be a club that wherever you, and I'm also a trans, I moved here when I was two, so I'm very sort of, domestic. I, I, I am, I sort of was raised my whole life here, but I also, my parents are immigrants, we came here. And so, but our, our goal from the beginning was you have this amazing mosaic of a city. And, um, and I say, and I say this to players too, that wherever you're from, you will find a home in Los Angeles. It's this beautiful mosaic of no different question. things. Yeah. And you don't like New York, you have to kind of become like a New Yorker. Whereas LA, you could stay yourself, you find your own home and it's this beautiful, like it, it combines into this beautiful mosaic and how it sounds super abstract, but how can we represent that on the field? And that's been our intention. So when people like you who say, Hey, I came from a footballing country and I come to LA now and I see that, that affirms that we are taking steps right to track. deliver our promise to the city. Yeah. No, and the young true. people will continue to be tied because you have really good people, uh, you know, on the brand, like guys like Rich, yeah. they are doing the right thing, getting to the play, you know, to, to the young minds. Right. Cause again, we're all old farts, you know, we've had our kids, <laughs> but I think, I think you started something, you, you all started something, a culture, uh, you know, change in this city that will live for many, many years. I do not believe this is just, you know, the new it thing that you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real deal. Players. And I, I can tell you that being a person that's watched uh, Serie A for a long time, I never could get behind MLS. And I remember watching the first time I, I had seen anything about when you guys were on stage and we knew that the name was going to be LAFC and all this stuff. And I remember telling my wife, like, I'm this is the team I'm going to follow. Like, I follow Juve. And when we had our daughter in Santa Monica Hospital. On uh, in September 14th, y'all played a game three days later, and you better believe I have that baby on my ch chest, That's and I'm awesome. jumping and I'm yelling, and the nurses are like, "What in the world?" And I'm like, "I'm watching football." And the baby and the <laughs> dog—I mean, it was beautiful, and, and that's just what LAFC gives us. And so we appreciate awesome. you for that, John. So thank and you so much, man. I'm sure your leaders, that your your listeners, aren't here to listen to me and uh, ask you guys questions. But how did no, you guys great. connect? Uh, I started the space. Spaces on on Twitter. And I started talking about LAFC with two other people. And next thing you know, I started growing and growing. And I kept on reaching out to people saying, hey, man, if you love this club, I love this club. Let's talk about this club. Let's talk about football. I needed I needed people to interact with because I wasn't in L.A. And I wanted to feel uh, the 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 shoulder to shoulder, you know. And um, and so I kept on uh, meeting people. Celso does numbers. And so I was like, well, if I'm going to get into this, I need to have a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. We started talking. He does all the numbers. He does all of our stats, everything that we need for any of our website, for any LAFC website that we have, uh, our website. And yeah. then Eric, you know, he um, – He's new to learning football, but he's very intelligent on it. And he also knows a lot about contracts. So we started trying to understand how contracts worked and we broke it down. So yep. in our spaces, that's what we were talking about. And then people was like, hey, man, I really like this. So we decided to do it on a on a video. So this is our first year doing it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, for myself, I'm a, I'm a crossover NFL fan. Uh, when LAFC was, was uh, reaching out that they were going to be a thing and you could put down your deposit for season tickets – I, you know, I owned a business and I was like, ah, season tickets for a sports thing would be cool. So mm -hmm. I signed up and, and got it, got into it. And, you know, it, I always love following NFL and the salary cap rules and all that. It's like, again, I love that game within a game, which I love. I kind of love how convoluted MLS is as well, because, right. you know, I, I just nerd out on it. And uh, yeah. yeah, I got, I just fell in love with soccer, you know, never really, like most American kids, I played it till I was eight years old and then I played baseball, you know? Right. And, uh, and now like what you've done, I think, and what LAFC has done to try to just grow the game here. Now I want to see the game grow here in the United States. And sure, I think yeah. what you're building, if there's a great legacy of what MLS and the LAFC coming, I think how you've done it is going to help grow the game across the whole, the whole country. And I think that's really at the end, the contribution that you all are doing for the game here. And so I think it's yeah. a beautiful thing. You and Apple, right? Which this new TV deal we're very excited about. It's going to, oh, wow. you know, create eyeballs yeah. all over the world. You know, everybody's going to see that we're not a retirement league. Like, unfortunately, the British yeah. lady, uh, you know, asked me about. Uh, I don't like that question, by the way. But, <laughs> They'll learn or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So ultimately to me, uh, you know, these eyeballs have to see what we're all about and, and what the quality of these El Trafico games are, where we have five beautiful goals, you know, or, or, or well orchestrated, not bad goals 
examples at all. So, you know, the, the quality of the soccer is going up, and I think just having more eyeballs, right, is through gambling, fantasy football, yeah. or you just, just essentially just having the ability to stream a game, you know, is what is going to get us to the next level. And, of course, the World Cup in 2026. I cannot wait yeah. for that. No, I think so. we're... It, we're at this and we're, we're like starting up the and after the inflection point i think things are things are on on the up and i i turned to one of our assistants before the game friday right before we huddled up and i played in the league for like nine years and i was like i never had a game like a regular season game in mls that feels like this just didn't exist yeah like there is exactly. no there's nothing like it there's no yeah, rivalry yeah. like it there's no you know, and people talk about which is better and what have you. There's nothing like, and you can talk about history and you can't rewrite history. We've only been around for this long, but like the fact that we are, we overlap in the same city is very different from being in a different, in the same region. And like every single person that is associated with LAFC knows the consequences of that game. Like it's, it's not three points. It's not one, it's not another game. It's like, if this doesn't go well, we are going to be miserable until we beat them. That's right. <laughs> you know, like, you're yes, going to always true. be like, you got to be kidding me, you know? And everybody knows that. And so I just turned and I was just like, this is awesome. Like, I never had a feeling like that in MLS where a regular season game felt like do or die. That's true. It's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how the Dodgers are when they is play. Ohio State, it's, Michigan, because I'm a, a NCAA yeah. football fan. And the closest thing to me is that kind of rivalry you get in college between two rival schools. And yeah. and, and yeah, and that's a stretch of a comparison because I think it's very different. But uh, but it's, you're tapping into that type of emotion, you know, that kind of almost pseudo, hey, I want to call it, right? Because ultimately when the game's over, you go home and, and, and yeah. it is the But end then it. you go home and you I think, think – yeah, And like – Look, and I think we've done a really good – we have so much traction in all of Los Angeles. But, like, you go home, and I certainly know that they'll – if you're a Galaxy fan and you go home, you're going to see an LAFC person, like, in the next <laughs> couple of days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's different from – Play nice in the sandbox. Yeah, that's different from <laughs> Seattle and Portland where it's like, okay, game's over, go home, we go home, we don't see each other. This is Very like true. an everyday reminder, and it's – it's unlike anything else. It's, it's, it's funny that out. you say that because I did get a message. And the guy was like, oh, this win was so much more sweet because when I went to the gym today, I actually got to wear my LAFC yeah. stuff and make all of them eat crow because of what, you know, so that that's that's so true. It's like real consequence, not just three it points is. and not just position at a table, but it's like it's real consequence. And it's uh, it's bragging rights. It's it's a lot. And everybody knows that. It's not a surprise. Like before the game, everybody knows that. And. Yeah, I'm just really proud that the guys delivered in the way they did on Friday. Yeah, Rich's right. picture of uh, Raheem Edwards says it all. So yeah, that, that picture is worth a thousand words. And that picture of Rich that he oh, posted against the other. Yeah, well, it's it beautiful. beautiful. Raheem well, Edwards, you know, we love him. And, you know, because he's right. Not anymore, we don't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, just be nice because JT is Okay, here. we got to let John, we got to let him go. John, we we, we, we so went much. way over our time. Back to your family. Thanks for being patient with me. And, uh... This was a pleasure. It was great connecting with you guys. Thank you. Yep. Please come on again. Anytime you want to come back, we're here. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate Alrighty, it so much. Thank you so much. Thank man. you. There, guys. Wow, man. That was awesome. Right? Like, yes. that was good, man. You know, I mean, um, it, I, it, was, it was a way to end the show. Uh, we appreciated everybody. We're now ran over an hour and 30 minutes. But listen, I appreciate all of you guys staying in. We Our numbers got up here. Thank you for all the comments. Sorry we couldn't show them to him. Um, Thank you to Larry for making that happen. And then John's team, which have actually been an amazing team to deal with. Thank you so much. And um, to John for taking the time to come and hang out with us here at Voices of the Black and Gold. I couldn't ask for anything better. You spent way more time than we uh, actually were allowed. And so we appreciate that. Um, Thank you all for joining, man. This has been a great show. I've enjoyed it a lot. Have a good rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.